Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is best practice on backing up your photos. All right. And we're lucky because I wrote an ebook for you guys um, that you can download for free. And it, it talks about the three to one concept of backing up your images and it actually showed you exactly, you know, how to do it. But instead of talking about it, let me show it to you. All right. So here I am with my Skylum images. Um, let's come over here. So in the description, hello Wolfgang, um, in the description and in the chat, I put a link to this article on PhotoFocus that was for World Backup Day that I wrote. And you'll see down here the three to one backup plan and you can download your free ebook. So this is the ebook that um, you'll download for free. Now, what is the three to one backup plan? All right, it's simply it's three copies of your of your data. So three copies of your images, not four copies, not five copies, three copies. Store two of them locally right here. You see one, two stored on different media, and then the third one is in the cloud, or like a crash a, a crash plan or a backup place. Or a back place. Now, why two different medias? So, let's say on your regular on your computer itself. All right, you back. You have all your images on your computer, like I do here, on my uh, my E drive. So on my external drive, which is this Drobo right here, I have all of my photos under my E drive under. Um, underscore photos. Where is it? Right, right here. Under underscore photography. So these are all of my images that I, I've shot over the years. This right here, this this hard drive, is identical to this hard drive. Now, why is that important? Well, if this hard drive crashed, I'm not going to go into the whole road, um, the raid concept of Drobo. Just look at them as two big, big hard drives. If hard drive one crashes, I have hard drive identical to drive one. I'm up and ready. And while I go out and buy another hard drive, I can use this one as if nothing happened. Now, the third copy is in the cloud. Why? Well, God forbid, what if somebody comes in and steals everything out of my house? Now, if they do that, they're still in the backups. They're still in the, the, the hard drives. I'm lost. I have nothing. I'm speaking from experience. That happened to me at my, my business. We got broken into, and I just happened to bring my backup disk in to, to do all my backups for the day. I left, leaving my backup drives there. Boom. The building got broken into. We lost everything. Now, with that being said, if you have, here, let me pull it back. I did say two different medias. So if this were your hard drive, and let's say this is your, your laptop that has a, hard, a second hard drive or a desktop built in with a second one, the problem with that is what if that hard drive, the, the laptop itself, or my computer, what if it crashes? What if there's a power surge? Both of those hard drives are, are completely shot. So that's why it's important to have two separate hard drives to store your data. And then the third one, like I said, is out into the cloud. Hello, Kevin. Welcome. All right. So let me get back to um, our situation here. So now Luminar comes along and there's, a, there's one other thing we have to back up. So I have my hard drive backed up with all my photos. God forbid my hard drive crashes, I lose all my photos. We already said I use drive A to get me backed up. What about my drive C? So my drive C or most common, your main drive on your computer or your laptop, that storage operating system 
It stores Luminar. It stores your Luminar catalogs. It stores all that stuff for you. So that's a totally separate backup. Same concept. Two hard drives off into the cloud. So I can add that to my cloud storage. <laughs> Excuse me. I can add that to my hard drive so I have it all set. Now, what files do I need to back up for Luminar? Let me take you over here. This is really cool. If I come over here and go to catalog, so, and we've talked about this extensively and we'll continue to talk about this. A catalog is, a, just think of it as a destruction, think of it as a filing cabinet. And in that filing cabinet, it stores all the information about each of these photos. It doesn't store the actual photos, it just stores a location of where those photos are, are located, any changes you've made to those images, or uh, let's say if you had any stars or favorites, you've added to it. That's what the catalog does. So again, I make an incredible change inside Luminar. The world doesn't see it yet until I export it. So the changes in Luminar, if Luminar crashes and I lose my Luminar catalog, I lose all those edits. So, best practice, I'm going to show you where those, where those catalogs are. So from the file menu, you go to catalog, either show in explorer or show in finder. Now it's going to boot up my um, explorer or finder, and boom, here it is. Coffee Break 2021, and that right there is one of the most important files you have for Luminar. If the program crashes, big deal. You can just go on to the website, re-download Luminar, and you're back up and running. This is the file that you need that stores all of your edits and all the changes you made to those images. Now, I'm going to back up just a little bit. Typically, typically, it's stored in your pictures folder. So the default location is your pictures folder right here. Okay. I, I don't like having mine stored in the picture folder. Again, this is my personal um, feelings on this. I don't like having it here. I like putting it on my fastest drive, which is my C drive. And I, I created a folder called Luminar AI Catalog. Now, another topic is, should you have one catalog or should you have many? Do you want one catalog or do you want project-based catalogs? That's for a totally different, um, no, that's for a totally different segment. If you're using Luminar as a plugin for Photoshop and Lightroom, you're still using a catalog. You still are using a catalog. The difference is you're not storing a whole bunch of stuff in there. So if you're only using Luminar as a, a, a plugin, this isn't as important. But if you're storing any images inside Luminar, make sure we back up these files. So I would back up the entire Luminar AI catalog folder. Put that on my hard drive and then have it copy to my second hard drive, and then boom, it goes up to the cloud right here. Co <laughs> copies to the first hard drive, copies to the second hard drive, and then at like 2 o'clock in the morning, it jumps up to uh, my off-site backup. Let me see something right here. Um, okay, here we go. And, and again, this particular... Um, ebook is going to actually give you resources on you know where do, where do you buy the hard drives um not actually how to build and set up that three two one backup what i want to do today is show you which files you want to add to those backups so again the luminar ai catalog right here all of them is what i want Whew. now we got that out of the way and and you're right, right Wolfgang. Um, so 
it's tedious. It's that, and, and I joked with Angela, my co-host, she gets to do all these really cool, exciting, hey, let's make this photo look absolutely amazing. This is the boring stuff, but we need to do it because, God forbid, you crash your hard drive. Now, let me rephrase this. Not if your hard drive crashes, when. It will fail. All right? Or a good example is I have a niece who has every image of my great nephew stored on her um, phone. And she doesn't have enough room in her iCloud. So if she loses her phone, she loses five years or six years of my nephew. That's why it's important to back it up. So, and who's asking, can it be automated, Jerry? Yes. And I'm going to go through that to where it's a set it and forget it. You, you create it. And then every March, if you notice, we put it in here. March is World Backup Day. Here it is. March is World Backup Day. Um, what I recommend, every time you change, every time you change the um, battery on your smoke detector, make sure you do the back, make sure you check your backup that it's running smoothly. Now, yes, Kevin, so inside the comments, inside the comments, I have a link to where you could download the free ebook. I also put it in the comments. I put that in the comments below. And I also put that in the comments if you look through um, the chat. I put it in the chat itself. All right. So you could find it either in the comments or you can find it into the chat. All right. So now that we have this set, let me show you something really, really cool. Um, here we go. PC, uh, our window users, be excited. Don't get upset about this. Be excited, but don't get upset. On a Mac, this is so freaking cool. If you ever have a problem with your catalog, so if your catalog crashes for whatever reason, um, I've had instances when I upgraded or updated one copy of Luminar to another copy. We're talking... Um, the engineer is sending me the new releases before we send them out to you. It messes up my catalog. What I have to do is, is what's really cool is Luminar builds an automatic backup system for you. So I'm going to show you where that is. So Luminar put it right here, backups. Now, for us Windows people, all we're seeing is a bunch of files. It doesn't make sense. However, for the Mac users, this is so cool, you hold down the option key as you start Luminar, and it'll give you a choice and say, hey, do you, want to, do you want to recover or start Luminar from a recovered backup? And then you choose which one of these backups you want to recover. So that's working because of the operating system, it's working for window, or for the Mac users. For the Windows users, that's something we're working on, and we're trying to do around with the operating system. So I need you to do me a favor here. If you read in any chats whatsoever on Facebook or social media that, oh my God, I can't log into Luminar. Luminar keeps crashing on me. Help, help, help. Tell them, rename your Luminar catalog. And what I mean by that is, they could just come in here and if I were to rename this, let's say underscore, if I were to put an underscore here, I don't want to, well, I'll mess with it and just delete it back. If I put an underscore, let's get to it. There we go. And type old like this. Now when I start Luminar, Luminar won't be able to find it. It'll be forced to create a whole new catalog and Luminar won't work. But what if I want this catalog? A good friend of mine, Carl, came up with this, which is pretty cool. Come to the backup, figure out what, when was the backup good? Let's just say we'll use this one. Watch this. Right click, copy. Now I copied it. I'm going to go to my catalog section. Um, I already have an erase me. Let me, let me remove this erase me. There we go. I'll right click, create a new folder, and 
Let's call this erase me for now. All right, now I'm only doing this as temporary where I want it to be stored. If I double click and then Control V or Command V, I copy it and pasted it into this directory. Now, keep in mind, Mac users, thankfully you don't have to do this because again, option, key as you open Luminar, it lets you select which backup to use. So now what we need to do is this. I'm just gonna come over here and look at this. The, the, the file extension is Luminar AI. So what I wanna do is come in here, dot, Luminar AI. So now I just renamed it Luminar AI, and guess what? That right there is now an official catalog. So let me close Luminar for a moment. There, so now my Luminar is closed. So if, hello Julie, so if I can't, if, if Luminar isn't opening for me, let's run it. Um, so if As I freeze, there we go. If Luminar doesn't start for me, that's when I'm doing the procedure I'm showing you. So Julie, I know you just jumped right in. We're at the part where if Luminar does not open, that's where I go. Now, to show you that there's still a catalog, I'm gonna go to that catalog and open it. File, open. And do you remember we put it under the C drive and we named it under Luminar Catalog. I named it Erase Me. There it is. If I open this, now it's going to open up and it's going to be identical to the same one we just had. So this was the backup that Luminar created for me. I mean, how cool is that? And I didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything for that. It did it automatically. It did it automatically for me. So previews, it does all that stuff for me. That's the beauty of Luminar. It does the self-containing backup. But what we were talking about is right here. What happens? There we go. But what happens um, <clears throat> if we lose our hard drive? So, again, you could download this for those just joining us. This is in the chat. You could download it and then read through the building of Bulletproof Backup. Three copies, two stored locally, one stored off-site. Now, to answer Gary's question, can it be automated? Of course. So what happens is I start here. Um, here's the backup software. Let me get back to it. Here we go. Automatically apply the 3 to backup theory. Let me get to it for you. I'm sorry, it's right up in here. Um, right here, good. So what we would end up doing, and I gave you solutions on it, is you, you buy the two hard drives, of course, but then you need a program to mirror the data from one hard drive to the other. I personally, right here, um, I personally use um, SyncBack Pro. So SyncBack Pro takes all my information from drive A, puts it on drive B. Then I could use Crash Plan or Backblaze to upload that to the cloud. And again, all this stuff is done late at night. So this here is set up. Let me get to it real quick. Here we go. Um, so this one right here is set up to mirror it, it itself. So in mirroring means it's going to make an identical copy. So this hard drive. This hard drive, they're identical. Then we upload it to the cloud, and that makes incremental backups. So I could actually go back, and let's say I worked on a, a Photoshop file that had several different changes to it. I could actually go back and pick, when did I make a change to that? Oh, I don't like the new change. I wish I saved this change. I can go all the way back and, and get that, all right? So. That's your three to one backup. 
And then to recap, what we need to do is back up our Luminar catalog. So, and again, if you're a Lightroom user, same thing. Back up your Lightroom catalog and you have all of them in one spot. I named my Luminar AI catalog. Do the same thing if you have Lightroom. It could be your Lightroom, whatever, CC catalogs or yeah, catalogs. Whatever you want, it's up to you. But the most important thing is that you need to back up the catalogs along with your images. Whew. All right, so the goal was not to make that too techy, and I hope I did that for you. I don't want to make it too nerdy to where it's not fun, but like I said, follow that ebook, and the ebook will it actually show you um, what purchases you can make. Now, um, Kevin, let me pull this up here. Kevin said that he has eight terabyte photo drive. It's almost full and out of space. Perfect example. So Kevin has eight terabytes. It's a lot, but nowadays you could buy an eight terabyte hard drive. But since he's already had eight terabytes, I would buy a 12 terabyte hard drive and they're not that expensive. So now you have two 12 terabyte hard drives. What Kevin would do is copy everything from that eight terabyte Put it on that 12 terabyte. Here's the problem. Now that 12 terabyte only has four terabytes left. So Kevin, um, let's say it took you uh, two years to build up to that eight terabyte. You know in another year you have to upgrade again. All right. So that 12 terabyte, this 12 terabyte, you're doing great until you have to upgrade again. Now I recommend something like a Drobo, Synology, Western, Digital, and it's called a RAID system. And with a RAID system is you put in as many hard drives as you want, well, how many they allow you to have, and then you put those in into, into the drive. I would repurpose the 12 terabyte two drives, and I'd also repurpose that other eight terabyte you have. Now you have 12 and 12 is 24, and then there's that eight right in here. But keep in mind that there's a whole calculator. Because it's a RAID system, instead of having that, say, a true 24 terabyte, you may end up with something like um, 12, 20 terabytes total in the beginning because it spreads all the stuff out. I don't want to get into the whole RAID concept. If you're over eight terabytes, look into a RAID system. In Kevin's case, oh, I'm sorry, over 12 terabytes, look into a RAID system. Kevin, in your example, two 12 terabyte hard drives will do the trick. Um, Gary, full Gary said, do I recommend PhotoFocus? Uh, I'm one of the writers on PhotoFocus, and I'm also a Drobo ambassador. I've been for years, but my main job title is Director of Education for Skylum. I'm fortunate that I've been around, like Kevin, for, for a long time. That I get to have all these different um, things I've worked on. So after losing in my business, losing all of my images because of a theft, I really went into understanding backup concepts. And I stumbled upon the 3 to one backup. Then I stumbled upon RAID. And then Drobo made me ambassador... Oh my God, over 10 years ago, if not longer. So that worked out great. Now I'm 100% Skylum, the, the director of education, and I see what we have, our catalogs, and understanding that it's so important that those catalogs don't get lost. And then, uh, because, because let's say we back up all of our, our um, photos and we get all those photos back, well, that's great. But then, what about all my edits? That's where all those edits are stored in those catalogs that we've created. Now, one more thing, and if you have questions, please throw them in the comments. Um, sorry about that, here we are. Now, one last thing I do wanna talk about, and again, it's not as, as exciting, oh, let me pull this up, is, while that's, had a message 
from one of our, our readers on uh, our insiders program. They lost all or they deleted all of their photos. Now, how do they delete all their photos? They went in and they thought that Luminar duplicates their photos on their hard drive. And, and Luminar doesn't do that. So Luminar doesn't duplicate your, your, your images. What Luminar does, let me move it here. Right, what Luminar does is it's a reference on where those images are. Well, they deleted all of their images inside Luminar. Now, Luminar goes out of its way to tell you, hey, are you sure you want to delete this? Yes. Okay, you, if you delete them, they'll permanently be erased. Yes. Well, they gave you a choice. They said yes. So where does Luminar put it? Into the trash bin in Luminar. It gives you a choice to pull them out of trash bin. You go to your Luminar trash bin and say, nope, I want you to erase it out of my trash bin. Are you sure about this? If you do, it will erase you from the hard drive. Boom, they said yes. Finally, if you have it set up on your windows, you have a windows recycle bin. Inside that recycle bin, guess what? All those images are there. If you go to your recycle bin, Right click and say, empty recycle bin. Boom, you lose it. Look how hard it is to delete all of your photos. This particular person did it because they were so adamant on getting rid of those images that they thought were duplicates. So I wanna make sure that that's clear. Luminar does not make duplicate photos of your images, all right? So there's no, there we go. So there's no duplicates at all so if you hit erase, read it also um, on your hard drives, all right? So I hope that answered the question. And by the way, let me pull this up for you. Notice right here, look at this. So what I was trying to do for you is I wanted to purposely crash the, hard, um, the catalog. Remember we had an erasement catalog right here? So I deleted it, and look what it's asking for. Well, do you want to create a new one or choose a different one? Well, let's just create a new one for now. So if this ever happens to you, look how easy it is. I'm going to come over here, catalogs, and let's call this my new catalog. Luminar does its thing. It's going to rebuild and create that catalog for you. In fact, here it is. And they'll tell you, welcome to, new, welcome to it. Let's get started. You have to add a, a folder of images. So I'm going to come over here to Coffee Break. Let's see, C Drive. Um, photography. Here we go. And let's do Coffee Break. There. Now I'm going to add all those images inside my new catalog. And now I'm back to right. Now I'm back to running. But any changes that I've made, even to these images that were in a different catalog, they don't come over to this one. So that's why I can't stress it enough: the importance of backing up your catalog. In my case, fortunately, I would come over here, catalog, and here's my coffee break one. And then I'll let it reinstall. There it is my catalog itself. So again, my favor, my favor to you guys is if you do see on social media somebody complaining that they lost all, they can't get into Luminar because their catalog is corrupt, show them the trick that we just did. If you don't remember it, please just rewind and watch this. Just show them how to make, a, to rename their catalog and then relaunch Luminar and they'll be good to go again. All right, so guys, again, I tried to make that exciting and not um, too techy. I hope I did that for you. So if you have any questions, please download that ebook, check it out. If you have questions, leave them in the comments and we'll try to answer them the best that we can. All right, and don't forget, all right, um, 
Okay, thank you, Russell. And don't forget the uh, marketplace. Let me pull it up real quick for you. So if you want more resources, here we go. Oh, I know what I'll do for you. Let me get back. Here we go. If you're looking for more resources on Luminar, please come over here, click Help, and User Guide. Luminar AI Insiders, that's an awesome place to join. You have Skylum Blog, Luminar Marketplace. So if you want more resources, go here. If you click on Luminar Marketplace, it's gonna take you over to our marketplace. Here you could download Let's say uh, LUTs, for example. Rich Harrington has some free LUTs in here. There's some free LUTs, and then of course, there are some paid LUTs. There's templates you can download that are free and some that are paid. If you're part of the Luminar X membership, you can actually download um, skies, LUTs, templates, a whole bunch of other stuff. And the cool thing about that is let me come over here the cool thing about that is if it's part of the luminar ai um uh, luminar x membership it'll actually tell you it's included with the luminar x membership so this way you don't have to purchase it you'll know that it's included into it so i think that's really cool how, uh, how the web team did that uh, so that's there if you're part of, which you should be, uh, help right here. Luminar Insiders. Here it comes up. Um, I got a lot to answer. so <laughs> I'll be busy all night here. So here, think of this as a Facebook for us photographers about Luminar. The difference is, there's no political garbage, there's no hate speech, it's people pulling together to help each other out on becoming better photographers and better at Luminar. You could ask friends, or create, develop friends, ask them, hey, what new camera should I purchase? Or um, if you have questions on how to do a technique inside Luminar, just ask the question or check out some of the articles um, and you'll be able to find all the information you need. And then you can also join us. Let me pull it up here. Coffee break is also at 1 p.m. I know you're used to the five on YouTube. The 1 p.m. coffee breaks here. The difference is these ones here are, are interactive to where it's Zoom meetings that you unmute your mic and you just speak, we're watching each other in real time, we're, we're video chatting back and forth. Here what we try to do, just like we're doing here, in the first five minutes, we try to cover the topic, to give you all the answers you need in the first five minutes. Today was a little bit different because backing up is a very long and complicated process. Luminar techniques are very quick, so within the first five minutes, you learn what the episode is all about. And then after that, people start asking a ton of questions, some pertaining to the topic, others to just, hey, how do I do this? Um, or what are different ways to get these results? And you're welcome to join us there. Again, 1 o'clock daily, Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern time. And the only way to get to it is if you're a member of Luminar AI, which you are, just go to just go to the insiders program and click on events and you'll find the link right there all right so i hope they answered all your questions and i want to thank you guys so much for joining me and i'll see you at the next coffee break